Hello and welcome back to another Ball Blog Video Diary. It's been since that my last video we've been through another winter. The snows came, we had 15 centimetres came overnight of snow. The garden was buried under snow and ice and freezing conditions for for over seven days. And then it came out quite quickly as a as it turned to rain and we've had a lot of rain since then and even since then it's been cool yesterday for instance our top temperature was 6.5 degrees today I've just checked and it's 13.6 so there's a warm front come in although that's bringing rain later again so the, the, the snow and the has, has left its mark the winter it did damage things it hastened the end of a lot of the earlier bulbs that were flowering. The small iris and that got a bit trashed. And also it, it's left its mark on here. Here's some just coming out. Erythronium dense canis. And you can see it's the snow and the cold sitting under frozen snow and ice. For a week's not done them a great deal of good. But the thing about a garden is it will recover. And it won't be long before we've got lovely scenes as the next wave comes. So in, in a way what we lost is the longevity of some of the flowers and uh, the lovely transition we, we, we more often get between that early phase of snowdrops and Aranthus and then the Corridalis and other. But around the garden we've still got snowdrops. Snowdrops have not stopped. The early ones have gone over, but there's still plenty appearing. And I don't know if you can see down here. Here's a lovely clump of just a cultivar crocus seedling, because these things do seed around. We didn't plant that there, it just appeared. And it's there, but what I want to come up and show is here. This lovely bronze haze. Typical of our garden is the you finding plants for ground cover and this is anemone ranunculoides and when it first comes through it's so bronze and you can see well I don't know if you can see I can see all the tiny buds there so it will soon be a heap of a heap of golden yellow flowers and there's erythroniums coming through and this trilliums here's one of the irises that got trashed in the snow and you can see the, the build-up as the Eranthus come through. So it, it's still looking good in this transition phase. Round here the snowdrops gone over. More Corridalis, more of the wee anemones. Corridalis seed all over the place. Look at the... It's seeding out into the moss on the rocks. It's Corridalis seed and it seeds out into the path. I obviously have to do a bit of weeding in the path. Oh, and there's these pesky town pigeons. This is my embarrassment or my disappointment in the garden. This area I've spoken before under the feeders where the town pigeons have come and just trashed it. They trample and just squash everything. And I've been thinking and trying all sorts, but I'm going to re-landscape this bit underneath there. I think quite interested in trying it with cobbles. But we have little plants here you can see at the edge surviving an Oranthus. Anyhow, let's walk around a bit while it's sunny. All over this Aranth the erythroniums are starting to come through. And I am sure they will feature heavily in future diaries and walks. Round to the cobble bed. There are little flowers. There's various little narcissus and a lot of leaves. A lot of the leaves are of autumn flowering crocus of course. <coughs> and as we come round to the, the trough area, still some of the troughs need a bit of tidying but here we have a Primula marginata, 
less florifer flowered, well, less well flowered this year perhaps because of the hot dry weather. But the, here's a, a nice saxifraga opposite of folia form here hanging over the corner. And other saxes. I do find with many of these saxes just growing in, on their own in troughs. They, they have a really good flowering year and then the next year not such a good one. So I'd be hopeful with the right conditions that they flower better next year. Little tiny pink scylla with Ar Aranthus guinea golds up here. And again you'll see there's all sorts here. There's, there's various cultivars of anemone, ranunculoides. There's lots of little daffodils. This is a better flowering. They're just not out yet, but all these tiny little Asturiensis forms and Cyclamineus, tiny little plants. Cyclamineus ranges in size. So here's a nice juxtaposition with two. Well, the Narcissus minimus and Cyclamineus together. But they're popping up all the way through. It's only a few years since I decided to plant bulbs up in this crevice bed. So as we come round to the, again very typically, a crock is self-seeded, that's a Hoflianus type, self-seeded into the path. There's a Hepatica seeding down in the moss with ferns from this little bed up here which again I've featured previously and will possibly come back to as it gets going in the colours, but everything you see that's covered in moss is broken concrete and these are the Corydalis. This little hepatica here, the white one, it's been in flower for over a month, but there's hepaticas appearing all over here. And then up here we've got some of the Erythronium dense canis. And Corydalis malkensis, the creamy white malkensis that gets everywhere in the... These are the Erythronium beds. There's an, a dark form of Corydalis solida. And really what works is not a clump of one but the mixture. I mean that's really quite dark and unnoticeable but juxtaposed with the, the white ones it does beautifully. Just if I mention the, the leaves of erythroniums sometimes can be so beautiful. Some are quite plain but some have got these wonderful markings. I've given up trying to chase the pigeons. They pay no attention to me. They're just a pest, aren't you? But I love my wee birds so much, we we're get so much, Maggie and I get so much pleasure from watching the wee birds which we can see from the house. <coughs> Excuse me. That it's just something we're going to have to put up with. So we go around, always notice in the garden the, this moss getting torn up by the birds, partly for their nests and partly to, to look for grubs and invertebrates that hide underneath the moss and that's why it's we're so keen to leave our garden in, in a fairly naturalish state because it helps the wildlife here. Again you can see the self-seeding so here's a an allium seeding an erythronium there's a wee snowdrop seeded with another erythronium and there's a, an aranthus masses of wee scillas. So we never know what's going to come up. There's certain plants we do know we have planted. But then the joy is all these volunteers that seed around. Past its best here the Eric Smithii, Helleborus, one of the Eric Smithii's there's the one interesting. We just look what we the big bits are the bracts. It's these little green 
pot shapes at the bottom will look a bit like nectaries. They're the true petals. But the beautiful plants. Some of them are not so hardy here, but the, lots of them are. There's another group here. Really nice. And here we've got their leaves a bit showing because they were coming through when the snow and the ice came. Fritillaria imperialis. You see the ones with buds flowering, flowering, flowering. There's one over there a bit damaged. For, the leaves are a bit damaged. But you can generally tell the flowering size ones from the knot. And, But just all around my feet. There's Corydalis, there's Erythroniums coming through. It's just repeated everywhere. Snowdrops still fairly freshly out. In the path here, more Erythronium seedlings. In the old rock garden bed, this here's some of the Scylla rosenies just coming through. There's a small narcissus. Here's a dandelion. I'll need to take that out. I don't want a dandelion there. And there's a nice hepatica. So there's all sorts. There's mechanopsis. See, there's mechanopsis there coming through. Colchicum leaves and, and then the dicentras coming that will form the, the carpet here, take over after the Corydalis. Corydalis come up and flower and seed very quickly and then go down and leave it there. Oh, there's a, a leaf there. Now that's Erythronium japonicum. I know for, I can tell the difference between some of their leaves. I see trillium seedlings in there. Here's a, here's a veratrum, fimbriatum coming up. Oh, and here's the, again we'll see this probably later, the cardemone just coming through. So much just coming through. We've got here a nice little yellow Yellow snowdrop here. Oh, and up here's let's see another snowdrop here. We can what's this? This is this is EA balls. The one with the where the inners and the outers are much the same. Here's some colour showing a bit chewed. The yellow Erythronium tuluminensis. The, some of them are just coming out. And the leucogiums, they were out through all the snow. They were flattened, the flower stems, but they've popped up. Again, seeded into the path is Narcissus bulbicodium form. Well, here's an interesting juxtaposition here. This is not seeded, but planted as... When I raise a new plant, I, I, I pop them out in different situations around the garden to see how they do in different habitats. So this is a form of selection from Corydalis solida. This is Corydalis great and red. You may notice, actually, I just see... This is growing in a... A, white, a round white la pot, a lattice pot at the bottom, and what I do is as soon as it's over, which will be in probably in May, I'll lift it up and split it and replant it, and that helps me increase. And it's sitting next to here, so that's Corydalis crate in red, Formis ulna, and this is a hybrid, Capitata hybrid, and this is Corydalis crate in purple. 
sitting side by side. Lots of erythroniums again seeding into the path that they'll, they'll feature in a later one. So we come up to the this one of the more recently planted beds, although I keep going to have to stop calling it the new bed by the pond because it's far from new now. It must be five, six or more years old. The Aranthus guinea gold up here. Little Corridalis seedlings all over the place. I forget the name of that one at the moment. Bit Nar Narcissus cyclaminius. We've got Erythronium uh, Caucasicum, the white. And there's a, a lovely form of coming through. Again, a bit battered by the weather. But th this is Erythronium dense canis. And that's from, that was collected from one of the, about the furthest east outreach of that species, known outreach of that species in Donetsk of Ukraine. So there's the another Caucasicum. There's hepaticas in here as well of different colours. You can see how the birds have been digging among the mulch, which is what they do to go and look for food. Oh, down here. Oh, there's a this is the fun of doing this, because you keep finding things. Anemonella. Now, the birds find them before I do, because that's been uncovered by the birds. And what actually took my eye was not the anemonella. That was, I was diverted there, was, is here next to it. This is a wee... Trillium rivali. Popping through. And just more across this bed of the, the mixture of the, all the wee Narcissus cyclaminius and the Aranthus guinea golds. I particularly use guinea gold in this bed because I don't especially want it seeding around this bed. I want the other little things to seed. I want the Atticus to seed and the Corridalis and the Narcissus and the Erythronium caucasicum and Sibiricum that's also in here. But although it comes through a bit later. <clears throat> I also see there it's coming through. I'm not going to flower this year. A young, a young um, trillium ovatum maculatum, or is it maculosum? I forget. One of them, the, the patterned leaf. Anyway, let's move round from there. Before I go round in the pond, always worth a look, is the growing in a pot of the little almost Jacqueline Hillia, the Jack, is it? I forget its name now, the, the little elm anyway, is the Corridalis malkensis that seeds in, around in the base of that pot really quite wonderful. <clears throat> this area is still waking up but masses of trilliums and erythroniums to come there. <clears throat> and now we're arriving at the shadier end <coughs> excuse me of the garden where the snowdrops are only recently out so they avoided the the snow and planted up as a, in as near naturalistic a way as is possible in a garden. I really don't want clumps, I keep splitting them, but inevitably they do clump up. Again this bed to waken up and like we saw the wee anemonella over there, here's another one I'm seeing coming through. This is Jeffersonius coming through here. Oh <laughs> there you always find something. So um Scoliopus hallii. Took me a minute to recall the name. As you get older, names come back to you slower. They're all in there, but I don't remember. So this is the tiny wee plant. You could easily walk by it, as I almost did. And that's spotted around the garden as well. 
here it's slightly bigger cousin. Here's a bit here of Scoliopus. This is Scoliopus bigelovii. Two nice little plants. And then here's another. <coughs> Flowers getting blown over. Getting a bit tall here. But this is another Erythronium caucasicum. And this is one, if you've been with me and following my bulb blog and also I think previous video diaries you'll see here's a group of seedlings so when the flower is passed it falls and dumps its seeds and a few years ago that did this here so that's about three maybe four years old here's one two or three years old and then they'll be here's down here you can just see these are seedlings from last year so we end up with, which is what I want, is not just a single specimen plant, but a little colony of plants of different ages. So fully mature flowering, not yet flowering, just not long germinated. So that those plants of all ages. And of course a lot of these are growing through the Pyrola, Pyrola media with ground cover. I'm just going to pop round here and then I'll, it'll be a, a wrap as they say. The, I'll come back to this, I'll do a feature on this, but this is the wall with the er, er, Trillium Rivali, more Narcissus Cyclamineus. Here's some nice, a nice clump of crocus, hopefully anus. But here's the, from the other side, the snowdrops going right up into the, under the birch. This bed's always a bit slower. This is the far south of the garden and, and it's shaded with all these trees, so it, it, it's always a bit behind the rest of the garden. But you get these lovely woodland effects. So it's like a, a managed wilderness rather than a real garden. People like gardens to be tidy and ordered. Oh, I see all sorts of nice things coming right out in there. But I'm not going to go there just now. Down here we've got more Baranthus there coming, they come a bit later here. You can tell by the leaves of those there, that these are the cross tuberginias again, probably guinea gold again. And then there's lots of in amongst the colchicum leaves, which of course flower the flowers in the autumn, you'll see the Erythronium tuluminense coming, along with some of the snowdrops that are still hanging on. And the very tall snowdrops. So that's the a little tour for just now. I'll finish there before my battery runs down. Speaking about the camera battery, not mine. I can go on a wee bit longer, but this old camera, the battery doesn't hold on forever. So if you've been with me for listening for us duration, thanks for staying with me. I'll be back again. There'll be so much coming through in the next few weeks, but I'll be back in a month, if not before. When I think we'll be into Erythronium time, among others. So, thanks for now. Take care. Happy gardening. Bye.